Here in New York, chants of Save Our Kids rose from all five boroughs as hundreds of thousands of high school students walked out of their classrooms at 10 a.m. Alana Leeds is a senior at Edward R. Morrow High School here in Brooklyn. Today, we are fighting for change because we refuse to become a new set of statistics. Mayor Bill de Blasio attended their walkout and rally. I appreciate you and I appreciate students all over the city and all over this country who are standing up for change. At Brooklyn's Borough Hall, another rally with over a thousand students like Drew Myers. Yeah, I'm voting. I'm 18. It's time to let politicians know. Politicians have failed us. Steve Kastenbaum in Brooklyn, New York. All right. Um, we need change. Didn't that, uh, that hope and change thing ring hollow last time around? You're not hearing one solution being asked for. I'm 18. I can vote. I'm going to let the politicians know. Know what? They can't do anything in D.C. Where did you get the idea that government, at any level for that matter, or politicians were going to be able to keep you safe? Oh, that's right. You went to public school for 12 years. That's where you got it. And the left, you know, if you heard my promo, you know, it's... uh, Basically said, Tillerson's out, Pompeo's in, this is my I couldn't care less look. But I do care about what the next tactic, the next strategy of the left is, and this is it. Along with shaming evangelical voters, well, if you can't be a Christian and vote for Trump, what's wrong with you? In 2018, the American electorate will cross this historic threshold. And it's going to reshape. Listen to this talk show host for just a second. I'm not trying to be demonstrative. I'm trying to be factual. It's going to reshape the political balance of power for a long time to come. For the first time, the very first time, millennials this year, those turning 18 in the millennial uh, age range, will pass baby boomers as the largest generation of Americans eligible to vote. Um, There's no getting around that. That transition is going to end a remarkable, I had no idea until I read it, a remarkable four decades of dominance for baby boomers. No more. Not anymore. Um, they have been, baby boomers have been the largest generation of eligible voters since 1978 when they surpassed what is affectionately referred to as the greatest generation or the GI generation raised during the depression. So from 78 to 2018, baby boomers were the largest demographic. No more. Starting this year, it's millennials. And if you add those that turn 18, voting age, this year, you're talking about reshaping the political landscape. And that has not been lost on the left. That's exactly what this is about. Uh, let's go to uh, Dale in Weatherford. Dale, thank you for waiting. I appreciate it. How you doing, Dale? Yes, sir. Doing good. Thank you, Rick, for taking my call. Yes, sir. I just wanted to make a comment that this is no new trick by the left. I mean, they did it a long time ago with the African uh, African American community and the Latino community, convincing that the uh, right side, the Republican side, were all a bunch of racists. And uh, people like Jesse Jackson have been race pimps their entire lives. And if they weren't, would he have a job? No. No. As a matter of fact, if you go to WBAP.com, go to the Rick Roberts page, uh, I think you get there by going to shows and then my name and that. Uh, I go through the history of Democrats, Republicans, and racism. Uh, A lot of people didn't realize the KKK uh, was an umbrella group of Southern Democrats to harass uh, what they called radical Republicans, those that wanted blacks to have the right to vote and citizenship and so on, and to harass freed black men out of their states. Um, You know, LBJ signed that uh, historic Civil Rights Act. You remember that. Well, may not remember it, but you know about it. Um, and of yes, course, sir. everybody said, oh my God, he's a, you know, he's a savior for the black people. Well, you know, he may have done the right thing for the wrong reason because he said 
as chronicled by his autobiographer, uh, as soon as he signed that, I'll have those in words voting for Democrats for the next 200 years. And he was almost right. Um, you know, the, the, the party of racism is, was, and remains to be uh, Democrats, period. Absolutely. I mean, you look at their inner communities and the inner cities. Where have they been the last 50 years? In shambles as they were when they started. In poverty and, the, you know, the job rates, everything that goes on in those communities. And it's the same thing they're doing with these kids. They're parading these kids out to push a cause. Yep. They don't care one way or another what happens to these kids. That's why you hit on it earlier. There are no solutions because they don't have any. Because any solution that would work doesn't go in line with their agenda or their beliefs. Well, we're you know here again we're talking about high school kids. We're the big people. We're supposed to say, okay, this is the way it's going to work. Yes, you you have a uh, right to your opinion and to be vocal about it and so on. Um, but we need to take the reins here. Yeah, you, you don't get the you know the horses going as fast as they can go, bouncing down a country road and hand them to a, a teenager and say the reins to a teenager and said, here you drive. Uh, it doesn't work that way. We need to talk about school safety. We need to talk about the relevant issues. And they're not the same in Florida as they are in Montana or in Bakersfield or in upstate New York. They're all different based on the geographic location. Uh, we got a lot of work to do, but using, choreographing, manipulating kids is not the way we need to go. I appreciate it very, very much. It, it, look, here's the thing. He's right. He's right about uh, the Democrats and how they manipulated the black vote. And finally, the light went on, and uh, the black community said, whoa, wait a minute. You know, I was born in the morning, but not this morning. You've been talking about you're going to bring jobs back to the inner city. You're going to clean up the infrastructure you're going to do. There are no white kids going down to the projects, urinating in the hallways, spraying graffiti and selling crack on the corner. There are no, no, no white kids doing that. Um, you got people in the black community that need to be addressed, that need to be turned in. Um, what happened to all that money in Washington that was supposed to go to the black community? We're going to, you know, we're going to take care of you. We're going to bring the businesses back. Nobody's going to bring a business back to some place that looks like a war zone. And people have to live there. People have to live there for crying out loud. You know, and then you, Obama comes up with these programs. Well, there's too many black people in jail, so let's ignore some crimes. No, people have to live with that. Where the, where's the money for the infrastructure? Where, where are the schools being refurbished? Where are the businesses you promised? Well, I'm going to give you a, I'm going to give you a fifteen dollar minimum wage for what? There aren't any jobs for crying out loud. You know, the only thing is those activists correctly pointed out that Obama gave the black community was a minimum wage job for something that doesn't exist in their community and abortion on demand. Well, thank you very much.